On the shores of India's most wealthy and modern city, the flame burns for one of the world's oldest religions. The secretive ceremonies of Zoroastrianism are the private domain of Bombay's distinctive Parsis. These followers of the Persian prophet Zarathustra worship God through the elements. Today it's water, though nothing's ever done without the purifying force of fire. This divine spark of the soul is usually off limits to outsiders. We revere fire as the glory of Almighty. We revere fire as the uh, master of the house. But the house is deeply divided over the disposal of Parsi dead. For centuries, they've been taken to the Towers of Silence to be scavenged or picked clean by vultures. Cremation and burial are banned, but the vulture culture's in trouble. The vultures are fast disappearing, and the dead are being left to rot for days, even weeks. One doesn't like one's body to rot and create uh, problems for others. If a member of any other religion chooses to cremate, we cannot send him. But when a member of Sarastan religion chooses to come in, we have to make all the efforts to stop it. I don't quite remember when I saw a vulture last, maybe a few years ago, I think. But I do see a lot of bodies just lying there for months on end. And um, it's, it's polluting the area, it's polluting the air, it's not hygienic. Business runs in Parsi's blood. These entrepreneurial spirits meant that this tiny community, just 75,000 in a city of 16 million, has prospered. Bombay's famous Parsi dairies delivered reputedly the city's best milk, yogurt and sweets since 1916, every single day. And since then, not a lot's changed. This is actually silver, which is hammered into very thin foil. It's edible. Ervak Choivoy wants to drag this declining empire into the 21st century and the world market. It's a case of adapt to the modern world or fade away. It's difficult for the older generation to understand that uh, they're afraid, the fear is of losing something. They believe in trying to grow without change. That's not possible. A Parsi stuck in the past. <laughs> uh, some of them are. This chair was used by my father since for a very long time. Till, till he died. After he died, we have kept this chair vacant in his memory. How long ago was that? It was 31 years back, in 1970. It's been empty all that time? Yes, yes, yes. As a reminder of his, a, presence. Of his presence. This is his photograph. But not everyone's in love with tradition. This was once Bombay's busiest dairy, but it's steadily losing customers to cheaper competition. The Parsis first came to India's west coast more than 1,300 years ago, fleeing Muslim persecution in their Persian homeland. Since those desperate beginnings, most of them have settled here in Bombay, and they've prospered to become one of India's richest and most tight-knit communities. But the very traditions which have kept the Parsis together and now threatening their survival. The tradition causing the most controversy lies in the Dungawadi, the Towers of Silence. Shrouded in trees and mystery, it's here on Bombay's most expensive strip of real estate that the Parsis have traditionally been laid to rest. The aim is to stop the rotting body from polluting the sacred elements. They're left to be cleaned up by vultures, once as common in Bombay as seagulls at Bondi. Problem is, the vultures are falling off their perch. Numbers have dived by 95% over the last decade. 
collection. This is the white bag vulture and this is the long bag vulture. And how old are these? We suspect that there is a virus or sort of a pathogen which is killing them. Because the symptoms are very, very clear. They die, they, they remain there with the drooping neck for many weeks and uh, then they die or either on the nest or they fall down on the, from the trees. This crisis for the vultures is bringing to a head a clash between Parsi orthodoxy and the modern world. At 82, Bujo K. Karanjia looks like he'll live forever. The former Bollywood magazine editor turned historian arrives at work at 8 o'clock, six days a week. As a Parsi, he wants to be cremated and believes the high priests have got it wrong. What we say, we say is Pars that the, the Dungarwadi is common property for the Parsis. Every Parsi has two rights. He has the right to choose his mode of disposal of his body and he has the right to use this infrastructure for prayers, the infrastructure that is already there, that is Dungarwadi. No, in the Zoroastrianism, in the religious matters, there are no choices. A wedge has been driven between the orthodox high priests and the Parsi civic leaders, the Panchayat. They've accepted that to burn or be buried is a sign of the times. And they want to open the Towers of Silence for all Parsi's last rites, however they're disposed of. Having taken this decision, there's been so much controversy that they are now so kept it in suspension. It's paralysed the community. The Parsis are moving towards building a special vulture aviary, but no one knows if it will work. Matters aren't helped by the endless spread of Bombay's concrete jungle. And just as the vultures are dying out, so too are the Parsis. Parsis love a party. They're a gregarious lot who love food, a bit of a drink and a sing-along. They were the darlings of the British Raj, educated, entrepreneurial and European in their tastes. But while the Parsis are outgoing, they're also inbred. When they first took refuge in India, the pact with the local Hindu king stopped them from marrying outside their ranks. I wanted a Parsi guy. That was, uh, that was one thing very clear for me that I would marry a Parsi. And uh, I think that fitted all my counts, nearly all my counts. I think the Parsi community is on a decline, so we feel that it's better. Uh, we feel it's uh, better to have our children also marry within the community. And like most good Parsi couples, they plan for no more than two children. Two children, like you bring them up properly, I think that is better than having three, four and not being able to take care of them. Both of us working. But small families and a growing number of young Parsis marrying outside their community mean numbers are dwindling. Parsis pride themselves on being fair-skinned and fair-minded. To be Parsi is to be purebred, and those who contaminate the tribe are damned. Schmitter Godridge is heir to the mighty Godridge industrial dynasty. Their wealth sport the best of Bombay penthouses, complete with a bird's eye view of the Towers of Silence. She may live above the towers, but she won't die in them, because the priests took away her death rites when she married a Hindu. He said all children of uh, women who have married out of the community are uh, illegitimate. 
So those are very, very nasty things that they said about us. Orthodox priests won't recognise Schmidt's children as Zoroastrian, though this ban doesn't always apply when Parsi men marry outside. It is an exclusive custom, uh, uh, doctrine, custom, practice that we have to marry within the community. We cannot increase the number at the cost of our religious tenets, at the cost of our religious customs, at the cost of our religious practices. The priests regard the Zoroastrian faith and Parsi bloodline as one and the same, and any attempt to bring in outsiders is viewed as a threat. Riches are also at stake. Many elders fear non-Parsis will plunder the community's wealthy trusts and philanthropic funds. But without change, the Parsis themselves may face the same fate as the nearly extinct vultures. But the Parsis are resilient. They've kept the same sacred flame burning behind these walls for 1,280 years. In the tiny town of Advada, north of Bombay, the Iran Shah temple's been rebuilt four times, though the fire's never gone out. It's the Parsis' most sacred and secret site, and today they're celebrating its birthday and their identity. To belong to the Zoroastrian community means that your soul is spiritually very highly evolved, that it belongs to a very exclusive group of souls who, in nature, have reached a certain stage of evolution. That's what it means. It's, uh... It sounds very exclusive. It sounds rather yes. superior. Yes, it is. It's exactly so. Certainly there's nothing endangering Parsi pride, but the community's struggling with how to live and how to die. Famous for helping others, the Parsis must now help themselves. Is the Parsi community facing extinction? No, I don't think so. I don't know. By numbers, it seems there seems to be a danger, but I have uh, such a strong faith in the survival and the adaptable attitude of the Parsis that I, I don't think the community could ever die out. I just can't bring myself to believe that such a thing could happen.